I'm Chris, and in this video I'm going to make tabletop tiles with resin and XPF foam. Stay tuned. Okay, here I've got just about everything I'm going to need for this. And here's the piece I made last time. Everything's primed and ready for the dam to be put in place. Now I'm going to be using thin strips of XPF foam for this. I'm just going to hot glue that to the edges. Now you want to make sure that you don't have any gaps in your glue. Make sure that everything's sealed up really well. The absolute last thing you want is for silicone to, to spill out of here. All right. I've got everything dammed up. I've got a bead of glue everywhere. Everything's watertight or, or silicone tight. Now, I'm gonna be going with uh, some mold release here. Just spraying a light coat over the entire surface, making sure I get everything pretty well. You really don't wanna overdo it with this stuff, and before you pour your silicone, you do wanna make sure that it's dry. And here I've got the scale out with the, the vacuum chamber pot that I'm going to be mixing the silicone in. This is a tin cure silicone that I'm going with. It's pretty forgiving as far as a mix ratio, but you still want to get it very close to as accurate as you can so you don't end up with a more catalyst or silicone that, that you can't use. It's a 10 to 1 ratio in this case. Mixing it with a drill here. Here's a catalyst. You want to make sure you shake that really well. It's even got a, a little label on the top of the bottle saying so. Kind of important. Some of the sediment, if that's not uh, evenly distributed, it's, it's a problem. So yeah, make sure you mix that. And again, this is a 10 to 1 ratio. 10 part silicone to 1 part catalyzer. By weight, not volume. That's also important to make sure you get right. Here I've just got a kitchen mixer attachment for my mixer that I've stuck into my drill. Using that to, to mix the silicone, this is just going to be the best way to incorporate that catalyst into the silicon. You also want to make sure that you get everything that's on the bottom of the pot and the walls off of there. You want to, you want to make sure that you got all of that evenly mixed. Okay, here's my vacuum pump. Got my lid on there. And I'm pulling vacuum. You can see the silicon level starting to rise. Basically boiling the silicone. And you've got to check it every now and then. As in turn the pump off. If it if you don't, you're gonna end up sucking silicone into your pump and that's no go. And here you can see the silicon starting to fall as the vast majority of the air has been, been pulled out of it. It's just boiling away there. Turning off the pump, closing the check valve. And I'm just going to let that sit for a little while. Get as much of that air out of there as, as possible. The more you let escape now, the easier it's going to be later, the better your mold's going to be. Okay, and I am releasing the vacuum. Nothing too crazy. What you want to do when you go to pour this stuff is pour in the lowest area of your, your finished part that you're trying to make a mold of. And you keep your pour in the same place. You don't want to. You don't want to just drizzle that silicone everywhere. You'd end up with trapped air bubbles or trapped air. Now, once you've got a certain area covered, you could just pour your silicone anywhere over that area. You just want to keep your pour fairly high to make sure that you get as many air bubbles out as you can and again you pour from, from the low spot in your finished piece. 
When all was said and done, this took me about two gallons of silicone. So that's about $200 worth of mold right there. Is it worth it? It is in my case. Is it going to be in your case? Probably not. If I were going to do something like this and I weren't attempting to sell the terrain I'm going to be making, I would pour a much smaller mold than this as opposed to 39 by 24, which is what I've got here. I would probably go with something like, oh, I don't know, 12, 14 by 18 inches, something like that. You're still going to have about $100 into it, but you're going to be able to make your own resin terrain tiles. And, hey, it's not a bad thing. Okay, here I'm just pulling off this uh, damn material that I've got and cleaning up some of those edges with a razor knife here. Getting rid of some of that excess silicone after it's dried. It's oddly satisfying stretching silicone and cutting it. Here I am pulling the mold away from the piece and everything cured properly. Ah, I guess I should mention I let this sit for about 24 hours before I poured it, poured it, pulled it. That's the word I'm looking for. Big old slab of $200 worth of silicone here just checking over making sure everything looks fine and it does and there you go that's what it looks like big beast got a cat jumping around okay now I'm not going to pour resin tiles um, what I'm doing is making tiles out of two inch two and a half inch thick XBF foam and putting a resin veneer over that, a uh, textured veneer. So it's it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get, get the durability and rigidity of a resin tabletop with the lightness of the foam. Now, this jig that I've made is so that I can get a straight edge on my foam cutting table, like straight, straight, not, you know, kind of eyeballed it with a fence up against it straight and there I go cutting on my hot wire foam table this thing's kind of a beast it's uh, 18 by 24 and I don't know if you can see it you should be able to make it out but I've got a ventilation exhaust set up there so that I don't kill any more brain cells and I've already managed to get rid of. I've got a foot pedal here doing the, the off and on work for me. See? Straight. Okay, now... Pulling a right angle off of that so I can get these square, as square as humanly possible. This jig is just some masonite and some little two by twos I, I made up. Nothing fancy. Kind of clamping it in place on that that piece of foam substrate with my hand there, just just holding it firmly. And again, the reason I'm not just using a, some sort of rip fence here is I want this as as square and even as possible. This is the quickest, most efficient way to do that with the tools I've got. As you can see, I've got four tiles. Each one of these tiles is 15 by 22. That gives me a 44 by 30 playing surface. That's what the new 40K boards are, so that's what I went with. Okay, here I'm using a heat gun to 
vary the surface a bit. And yes, this lets off quite a few fumes, which is why I've got that ventilation set up. Any of you who use a hot wire cutter, I'm sure you know what, what those fumes smell like. And honestly, uh, with the ventilation fan I've got, I ended up smelling nothing after I was finished. Which I'm appreciative of. I'm sure the cats are too, though they don't complain too much. Unless the food bowl's empty. I'm going heavy right here. I'm creating something that's going to be a water feature later, so. Okay, now to pour my resin veneer, I'm using uh, this urethane resin. It's two part and my camera work, my fancy camera work strikes again. You can't see the line I'm going to, but this is a 12 ounce pour, six of each. pigment here, urethane pigment, not any kind of paint, but actual urethane pigment. If you use something that's water-based, you're gonna make nasty foam, unusable nasty foam. Okay, I've kind of lined out a space here on the board that I, on the, the mold that I made earlier. The reason I made that mold so big was so that I can get various surfaces cast various resin terrain and I've taken a sharpie and just scratched out an area there that I think would be good for this particular tile as you can see this is not not the first tile I've made I've tried this a few different times I'm gonna try to keep it relatively within this rectangle that I've drawn honestly I want it a little inside of that but time of pouring I didn't really know that kind of moving this stuff around making sure it's in every little divot I want it thick but I do want a fairly even coat something between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch thick this is gonna give me that pouring this in a two inch deep mold would have been ridiculously expensive, which is why I'm going with this veneer. Aside from the fact that it's also much lighter this way. Okay, and after this is set up, but before it completely hardens, I wanna go ahead and fix that to this foam substrate. Now I'm using Liquid Nails foam adhesive here. I've not had any issues with this stuff so far as far as it adhering to the urethane. I'm thinking it's gonna work out pretty, pretty well. And I'm smearing that around with a two inch disposable brush want to make sure I get an even coat over everything. Hit all those edges and everything in the middle. I don't want some big funky air bubble just hanging out. Make sure you get the entire surface completely coated. Or that's what I'm doing. You, you do what you're gonna do. That's fine. But yeah, okay. And like I said, I wanted that within the final shape of the, of the tile. Didn't want any overhang. I've got a couple little pieces. I'm, I'm tearing some of that off now. The fact that it's shy on the edges doesn't bother me. I'm gonna go over that with some sculpta mold which adheres terrifically to this resin and liquid nails that I've got here. 
Now for this particular application, I don't need a whole bunch of this stuff, so I'm not mixing up a whole bunch. Just enough to go around the edges. Any sort of uh, undercuts, I'm gonna fill those in. Again, nothing too crazy, just just going over it here with my finger. I'm trying to fill in all these little gaps and the air voids around the edges. I'm gonna go back over this with a two inch chip brush to make sure that I kinda knock all of that sculpt mold down. Some of these ripped edges of this resin, I'm gonna leave not completely exposed, but so that you can see the outline of it. Give a little varied appearance there. Make it look like a little bit of rock or something. And I'm just tapping this down with the one inch chip brush, making sure all those edges blend in pretty well. I've added a couple of extra rocks and various ripples on the surface of this tile here, just to give a little added variety. I'm pretty pleased with the way this has worked out. adding an extra piece of rock I've got, resin that I cast earlier, off the same mold that I poured the, the veneer off of. I'm just tapping that into place, blending those edges a little, kind of tooling that with the handle of the brush a bit there. Nothing too crazy. A little more tooling. And I did the same thing over the surface of all the pieces. Now, these little arrows, these are scores that come from the factory, which I'm sure if, if you've ever messed with two inch foam, you know exactly what these are. Uh, so I'm gonna cover these little, little score marks with some paintable caulking. I'm just trying to fill those gaps, clean them up a little bit. I'm just painting the sides and bottom with a latex primer. I'm doing that so that when I go to prime this with a aerosol, it doesn't eat into the foam. Also, this gives it a little added durability. Durability on foam tiles is always appreciated. Like I said, just going over to the bottom here, a light coat. Nothing crazy, just, just trying to get rid of that exposed foam so that I can go over this with aer aerosol without causing any sort of adverse reaction. There's nothing like priming with an aerosol over raw foam and watching your work disappear to the ether, as it were. But yeah, I'm just going with a Ace Hardware ruddy brown primer. I did film that, but the sun did a number on these white tiles as far as exposure goes. So I do not have any footage of me spray painting them, but if you're interested in this, you most likely have some experience with spray paint. And if not, you don't have to spray paint. You can always just roll this in a black or brown house paint, something along those lines. And this is what they look like dry before I start to go over them with any, any detailed paint. This is it, so thanks for watching the video. Peace. 
And that concludes the casting video. Next time I'm going to paint, flock, do some water effects. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe. You know, all that. Thanks.